chaos. That is what Clay Shirky in the beginning of uh, this afternoon predicted it. 50 years of it. And why is that so? Why are, is he expecting chaos? We are probably the most adaptable species in the world, we as human beings. But we tend to forget that pretty fast. When we are comfortable, when we have enough, we become lazy. We lose our crea creativity and we come to depend on uh, past experiences, um, on best practices that uh, happened in the past. And that, of course, works very well in a stable environment. When everything stays the same, you can use best practices. It is the fastest way to realize certain aspects in what you want to realize. However, the last 10, 20 years, the world isn't that stable anymore. In fact, we are on a turning point. A turning point in the way people communicate with each other, in the way people store their knowledge. Uh, we are dynamizing our, ho our whole environment. Uh, that means, of course, that these best practices no longer work very easy. The turning point we are experiencing now is comparable to what we have seen or, uh, with the rise of the spoken word, the written word, when the printing press started to come up. These were essential turning points where human beings started to communicate in a different way and started to store their knowledge in a different way. So, of course, this leads to the fact that you know there are solutions, you know your best practices, but they do not longer work in the environment where you are functioning. So this creates a fear for that change. And you want to hold back. What we want to do in the near future is helping to realize that transition from the old model, where everything is stable, to the new model, where everything is becoming dynamic. Uh, one first step that is interesting to see here is uh, the fact that emergent collectives is an essential uh, ID to help you realize what the perspectives are uh, and what you can do with something that is not completely organized as we uh, currently organize our work. Uh, emergent collectives uh, are not the replacement for what we currently use to organize things like uh, all kinds of organizations, like uh, governments, like uh, businesses and so on. They work uh, with a from attraction and not by enforcement. We are not obliged to do things. We do things because we like to do them. And understanding how these, this attraction works and how these attractions lead to emergent collectives is a very nice first step to realize how we can uh, take the next step, step into the future. Of course, uh, as I said, these emergent collectives are no replacement for uh, businesses, organizations and institutions. They are an enrichment of the environment in which those organizations, individu individuals, uh, institutions and so on function. And how do they realize that enrichment? They realize it by creating extra diversity. And they realize that diversity by slaying some of the borders. And uh, we know several kinds of borders. The most known uh, that everyone has heard of, of course, is the fact that the internet, which is the, uh, the uh, bottom, the, the mediator in our connections between each other, uh, that uh, the internet takes away the external uh, borders of space and time. It is very easy nowadays to work with someone on the other side of the globe. It is also very easy to create a uh, collective that functions 24 hours a day uh, uh, without straining the parts of the collective. So it takes away this kind of boundaries. But there is an also another very important uh, border or boundary that is taken away and that is an internal boundary the uh, segregation we have within ourselves. Uh, in the traditional model, we have to professionalize, we have to show one side of the die, taking that uh, metaphor to uh, 
uh, as an example, uh, we show one uh, side of the die. With emergent collectives, we do not necessarily need to invest a lot of time to use the other sides. So we can develop in a more or less uh, fundamental way all kinds of aspects that are in our personality that are in our person uh, personality available. So that leads to the fact that we are tapping natural wells. We can access things that are coming up out of ourselves, if not out of ourselves, of uh, out of colleagues or uh, out of other people we are working with together. So you could say that we have the chance now to all become 21s. Uh, we don't have to be ones, two, threes, four, fives, or sixes. We have the opportunity and we have the chance now to develop a full personality. And if you take the collective uh, in, the, in the equation, you get superimposed uh, 21s even. Um, this leads to uh, ultimately to the realization of what Heusinger dreamt of, namely the Homo Ludens. The Homo Ludens realizes the combination of play and work and the combination of amateurism and professionalism, leading to a world that is motivated by the things that we saw in the last video, for example. Um, of course, as we heard in other talks today also, this sounds a bit too good. There are, of course, uh, negative aspects, dangers uh, in every new development. Just think of the last big change, the Enlightenment, with the Industrial Age as a result. Everyone has probably already heard of the dialectic of Enlightenment, where ultimately you see that the best of intentions can lead to the worst of nightmares. What was the intention of the Enlightenment? It was all about freeing us from nature and freeing us from dogma and indoctrination. Yeah, that was a very a uh, positive message, a very positive thing that was uh, proposed. This led to uh, hordes, millions of people uh, in an enslavement uh, situation in factories in the 19th century and to the ferocious wars we all know from the 20th century. So, of course, I'm not saying that will happen now also in the next turn we are about to make, but we should take into account the possibility that the chaos Shirky predict is predicting will happen in more or less uh, of a uh, proportion. And that depends on us. So what we are proposing to do now, uh, following this uh, conference and following our study we did during a year, uh, is propose some projects that realize the positive aspects of what emergent collectives can do. Uh, and in that way, ease the transition from our previous age to the new digital age. And these projects we are proposing are going to do two things. Explain a, a bit how these things function, how these emergent collectives function. That is already what we are doing today. And on the other side, provide tools that people and organizations can work with. A first project that we are going to propose in a, in a month or so uh, is about what is called uh, groups at risk. Uh, those groups at risk are the people that are not functioning uh, very well within our production system. That can be uh, long-term unemployed people, that can be uh, low educated people, uh, immigrants, for example. They do not find their place in the production process in our society. By providing the correct tools, we will try to give them a gamified environment on top of a social platform to change the way they are motivated. Uh, they are currently externally motivated uh, or, or extrinsically motivated by money and externally uh, enforced to do certain things, but by providing the tools, we will try to give those people intrinsic motivations, doing what you like to do, and self-determination. The result should be an empowerment of that group, uh, and that could work, but it will also require, of course, not only a mind shift from those groups at risk, but also a mind shift 
from businesses, organizations working with these people. That's the first very concrete project that we will start very soon. Another project is aiming at a more traditional uh, small and medium enterprise uh, community, uh, which is of course the backbone of our, of our uh, Flemish and European economy, uh, by providing tools to uh, these businesses to realize uh, the, the possibilities that nowadays only the big enterprises have by giving them uh, an understanding of how emergence works, works and by giving them the possibilities to work together to realize interesting stuff. Both of these projects require one thing in common, that is alternative credit systems. We have already heard uh, a lot about it uh, by Bernard Littard. Uh, why are these alternative credit systems important in both these contexts? contexts? Uh, well, because uh, they affect credit systems are value systems. You can value certain things in another way if you have a diversified environment uh, supported by a diversified uh, set of organizations and institutions instead of only one uh, kind of institution that is run by a financial uh, caste, you could say. Uh, so these are the bloodline of our digital future. You could call the internet the uh, nerve system, uh, the cr alternative value credit systems are the bloodline of our future. Of course, to realize both these projects, we not only need the necessary instruments, we also will have to work with governments, with educational institutions and businesses themselves. Governments, because there are laws that are hindering our future, that have to be abolished. There are also laws that uh, will ha we have to invent new laws to uh, realize uh, the possibilities that are there. Uh, educational institutions will have to realize, as Kurt already said, that the, uh, that the student of today is functioning in another way than uh, the student in the past. And businesses will have to realize that, the, uh, that uh, they do not only work with suppliers, customers and workforce, but that these boundaries are uh, mixing uh, and getting together uh, faster and faster. So, if we realize these projects, we might just make uh, fast enough progress to uh, outpace the uh, entrenchment of the traditional uh, businesses and the, uh, the, nas the nation states that are trying to limit what is happening because they fear the future. Um, so, it is quite necessary to go uh, forward uh, fast enough uh, in, this in, these in these venues and uh, if we do that, we might just be in time to have a more stable and more integrated humanity to face the real challenges that are, that are coming like uh, um, climate change and li like uh, resource depletion. Uh, so I hope that we all together can work on such a future and all become 20 watts. Thank you very much.